Hey everybody, that's right. You are not going to believe this. Today we're going to be talking about the rock and roller. It's a rolling stamp for stamping concrete. Now we usually use the mats for stamping concrete, the flat rubber mats that we lay down on the concrete. We tamp them in the top of the concrete, pick them up, reset them. And that's how we've stamped concrete my whole life. So today, me and Luke are trying out this new, new to us anyway, rock and roller stamp on this is actually Luke's slab. Luke's the one pushing the rock and roller right now. So I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, Luke's putting this slab in at his house because he just put in a pool and he just wants, you know, a little slab area to put a, you know, a set of chairs and an umbrella and a picnic table and stuff like that. And we were going to stamp the concrete. So we had this rock and roller at the shop and we hadn't had a chance to use it yet. And he was like, hey, I'll just use it on my slab. So let's see how this thing comes out. It's kind of an Ashler slate type stamp roller. You can see the pattern there and behind. And we are trying it out by pushing it. And right now we're getting really good texture. Obviously, whenever you stamp concrete or whenever you finish concrete in general, timing is the key. So the couple things about using this for the first time was not only was this a pretty good size slab, as you can see, for stamping, but it was also about 90 degrees today. So maybe it wasn't the best temperature-wise day to start this with uh, with this new type of stamp method here. But as you can see, it's coming out pretty good. We're putting a, we got a clear liquid release that we mix some charcoal powdered release into to get kind of a charcoal liquid release type effect that's what you see that we're spraying on top of the concrete to keep the concrete from sticking to the stamp and that's working pretty good we've used that method quite a bit for you know in colored release for a lot of the stamp jobs we do sometimes we'll just go plain old clear liquid release then come back and uh like like teak wash it the next day to add that antiquing color and we could do that here too Yeah, you can see how that works right there. It actually works pretty good mixing the release right in the li clear liquid that way. Now, that, this is quite a ways. <laughs> that was about 30 feet to be pushing the the roller stamp across and trying to keep it perfectly straight. But Luke did a he did a pretty good job just controlling it by, you know, moving the handles either back and forth one way or the other and trying to keep the edge of the roller in the previous edge without making a double line he actually did a pretty darn good job for the most part being the first time you know and it's quite a long ways to see all the way across there too so we probably could have started on a little bit smaller slab for the first time but it's it's, it's coming out pretty good now because the temperature's so hot you know you only have so much time to get from one side of the slab to the other and the, again, the timing's the key. The slab's got to be pretty soft because this roller only weighs so much. And it's basically using the weight of the roller to put the impression in the top of the concrete. Now, they do make some weights for this. You can see those two little round nubs on top of that roller stamp. I'm going to show you how to add weight to this in a minute if you need some weight because Luke's going to need a little bit of weight starting pretty much starting on this row right here. We determined that, yeah, you probably need a little bit of weight. It's not leaving as good an impression as it did when we first started. And it really, I mean, it hasn't taken us that long to get from where we started to here. Probably probably 10 or 15 minutes. But it's just so hot out today that the concrete is drying like crazy, like wildfire. But so far, it's looking pretty good. I mean, for, for wanting to stamp concrete and... You know, if you've never done it before and you want to do maybe some small slabs like this on grade where you have access pretty much all the way around the slab, it, this, is, this isn't a too bad a way to stamp your concrete right here. But you really need, you really need good access like this. You, uh, it's not really for stamping something that, you know, you got only one, one edge access and maybe the other edges are up against a wall or something like that. But for the right situation... Here I am adding the weight right now. So those are the weights that come with it. And then, you know, you could add 
even more weight, you could slide on more weight over those bars if you needed a little bit more weight to add to it. This worked out pretty good though. I mean, he did have to go back and forth a little bit to make sure that it was leaving. The grooves were, staying, were going in okay. It was, the, it was the textured part of the roller that we wanted to try to make sure we were leaving into the concrete as well. So he's gonna just go back over this pass here, then we'll set it over and we'll we'll finish that last pass. He's gonna end up putting skirting down off the deck right there. So the actually that last little piece under the deck, you're not even gonna be able to see down the road, but he'll pattern as much of it as he possibly can. So as you can see more and more of this slab being stamped, I, I really wanna know what you guys think about this. Compared to, you know, if you've seen some other kind of stamp concrete where people use mats, we've stamped, I mean, I've been stamping concrete for over 30 years, and we've always used the mats, you know, and we've always, you know, either tamped them with a tamper or we step on the stamps and just use the weight of our bodies if the concrete's soft enough. So when you get it, when you get into a situation where you're trying something new like this, you're always a little uh, uh, wondering. You know, you're kind of wondering or a little skeptical about. Just I wonder if this is going to be heavy enough. I wonder how long it's going to take to go from one side to the other. Yeah, you can see Luke's just going back and forth a little bit on that last piece to make sure that all the grooves are getting in, imprinted in there deep enough and. You know, it looks like the way he wants it to look. Luckily, this is his slab, so he gets to make that decision. I'm going to show you too right here at the end. I'll I'll just quickly show you the pouring process. How how me and Luke poured this slab. It was the access really wasn't that great, so we had to use a conveyor truck to reach it. And it was just the two of us, uh, Darren and Eric. Eric's in the blue shirt way back there. They showed up. We we poured something earlier in the morning, and we had to leave those two guys to finish. So it was just just me and Luke pouring this and we poured you know we put a little bit of a brownish color in the concrete you can see that looks pretty good right there actually that that release is going to dry up and then Luke will just clean it and put a sealer on it and it's going to look just about like it looked right back there but this is the pouring process so it's about a six inch slab we got a mat of the fiberglass rebar in there we tied two feet on center we got 4,000 psi concrete with it's got a microfiber mesh in it, it's got air entrainment in it, and it's got water reducer in it, so it's gonna be really good, strong concrete. But that that conveyor truck you see right there, that reaches about 40 feet, and we could just barely reach the slab, so we had to use one of our little extension chutes just to make it a little easier to get concrete to that back edge. And unfortunately, I had to kind of hold the, hold the, the, the tremie there on the, on the, concrete truck so it would reach the six foot shoot so Luke had to do most of the pulling of the concrete here right here to start it flowed pretty good we use a 3 8 piece stone when we stamp concrete so the stone in the concrete is pretty small which makes it pretty easy for pulling around so maneuvering the concrete around isn't too too bad just it was just fighting the heat today that was probably the worst thing for us we got a grade stake right there in the middle. I don't know if you can see that little stake. It's sticking out probably four or five inches with a nail through it at the height, at the same height as the top of the form. So we're going to use that to go by for like a wet pad in the middle. You can see I'm magging that out right now, right to that nail. And then we'll pull that stake out. And then we're going to screed right off from that to make sure everything slopes the right way. Luke has this slab sloping just a little bit away from the house. And that way, you know, when it rains, water's going to run away from the house, not towards the house. Good drainage and all that. You can see that the color isn't, I don't know if I'd quite call that brown, but it it's not gray either like regular concrete. It, it's like a, oh, I can't remember the exact name of the color he put in it, but we use, we use the color from Butterfield Colors, and he picked it out. And it's in the brown family, but it's just not like totally brown. I don't know. What color do you think that looks like? So 
So when we when we stamp concrete, you know, when we go to bow float like this, we want to make sure we bow float it out really, really nice. Because sometimes in this hot weather, you know, you might not have a chance to get on it. Usually bef just before we stamp, we'll get on a slab like this and we'll mag it all out by hand or we'll use a funny float and we'll go over it again just to smooth it out a little bit more, make sure we get out all the bow float lines. But when it's this hot and there's only two of you, you know, you want to make sure you bow float it really, really good just in case you run out of time and you can't get on back on it quick enough. To get it all magged out, you want to be able to stamp it right after you bow float it and, you know, still make it look good. Now, we didn't have to do that in this case, but anyway, let me know what you think of that rock and roller. You know, leave your comments down in the in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings, multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.